up on today's Airborne, Airbus launches the A330neo. Long after the accident, the FAA fines David Riggs for his illegalities, and Cygnus cargo spacecraft docks at the ISS. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Airbus has ended months of speculation about the possibility of a re-engined version of its A330 wide-body airplane and announced the A330-800neo and the A330-900neo at the Farnborough Air Show. The company said the new airplane will incorporate latest generation Rolls-Royce Trent 7000 engines. Airbus says the A330neo will reduce fuel consumption by 14% per seat. In addition to fuel savings, the A330neo will see a range increase of up to 400 nautical miles. Deliveries of the A330neo will start in the fourth quarter of 2017. In addition to the new Rolls-Royce Trent 7000 engines, the A330neo will feature incremental innovations, including aerodynamic enhancements, such as new A350 XWB inspired winglets, an increased wingspan, and new engine pylons. Airbus says pilots will benefit from the latest generation cockpit systems and cabin amenities are enhanced. The FAA has acted against the crimes of aviation conman David Riggs. A little too late, we think. Riggs and an innocent and unknowing passenger were killed in a reckless stunt in China in September of 2013. But the FAA action relates earlier violations and another case of his recklessness in May of 2012 that cost the lives of two other people. The U.S. Department of Transportation's Federal Aviation Administration is proposing a $66,000 civil penalty against Nazarene Aviation Fellowship of Overland Park, Kansas, for allegedly violating federal aviation regulations. The FAA alleges that Nazarene Aviation Fellowship operated an aircraft in an unauthorized and unsafe manner when they allowed David Riggs to use the aircraft in May of 2012. Riggs flew the plane for an illegal commercial flight that led to the crash of another plane flying information with him. ANN's Jim Campbell noted there are a number of other players in this matter that gave Riggs ample support in these activities, and we're very curious about what, if anything, the FAA will do about it. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages with more news and our feature of the day. ADSB will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADSB today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADSB out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to news spy at aero news.net. A multitude of NASA research investigations, crew provisions, hardware, and science experiments from across the country arrived early this morning at the International Space Station aboard Orbital Science Corporation's Cygnus spacecraft. The cargo craft launched aboard Orbital's and Terry's rocket from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia last Sunday. Expedition 40 Commander Steve Swanson of NASA, with help from Alexander Gerst of the European Space Agency, used the station's robotic arm to take hold of Cygnus early this morning. Cygnus was then removed to the Harmony docking module, and the hatch between the module and Cygnus is planned to be open tomorrow. The mission is the company's second cargo delivery flight to the station through a $1.9 billion NASA Commercial Resupply Services contract. 
Orbital will fly at least eight cargo missions to the space station through 2016. The Orbital 2 mission is carrying almost 3,300 pounds of supplies to the station, which will expand the research capability of the Expedition 40 crew members. In August, the capsule, which will be filled with trash, will depart the station and burn up during re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. With some 2,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the pilots we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. Seven, six, four, three, two, zero, and liftoff for the final launch of Endeavor. It seems odd that a launch into space can now be considered a historical story rather than a current event. This video is about the last launch of the Space Shuttle Endeavour. Search launch of STS-134 on Aero TV's news channel. Just in time for Air Venture, PS Engineering has a new audio panel for GA pilots. Tom Patton reports. The panel is the result of a partnership the company formed with the U.S. Air Force. PS Engineering has licensed patented technology originally invented for Air Force pilots who need to be able to distinguish between multiple simultaneous audio signals. Intella Audio was developed to help private pilots cope with the same kind of audio overload that military pilots have to deal with. Using technology from scientists at the Wright-Patterson Air Force Laboratory, the PMA-450 combines digital signal processing and a simple user interface to provide lots of flexibility. The PMA-450 Intellivox audio panel also employs PS Engineering's automatic Vox system and is Bluetooth enabled. The company will be demonstrating the new audio panel at Oshkosh in just a couple of weeks. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. Airborne is brought to you by some of the best sponsors in the aviation business. We'll be right back with more news. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Welcome back! Eclipse Aerospace Incorporated announced that all 2014 Eclipse 500 Plus upgrade positions have been sold. In the four months since the program commenced in March of this year, more than 60 Eclipse jet owners have selected the Eclipse 500 Plus upgrade for their aircraft. All of these upgrades will be completed in 2014. The Eclipse 500 Plus package gives Eclipse jet owners who currently have the Integrated Flight Management Systems avionics package installed in their aircraft access to many of the features found on the Eclipse 550. Available features include auto throttle, an electric anti-skid brake system, high resolution PFD and MFDs, a standby display unit, new glass face windscreens, an improved air conditioning system. The Eclipse 500 Plus package also facilitates future expansion, including synthetic vision, enhanced vision, VNAV, radio altimeter, and ADS-B out. Industry insiders say the grounding of Bombardier's C-Series test aircraft may spell slower than hoped for orders for the airplane at the Farnborough Air Show. Flight testing was halted in May after an engine fire broke out on board the flight test airplane. While ground testing has resumed, the airplane is unable to fly to Farnborough, and analysts say that displaying the mock-up is unlikely to generate a lot of interest among potential buyers. The Financial Post newspaper reports that the airplane is expected to enter service sometime in mid-2015, but that means that the order book won't start filling up until later this year or early next. However, despite the airplane's absence, Bombardier has already announced the show has resulted in the signing of several letters of intent for both the CS-100 and the CS-300 airplanes. 
The Navy's investigation into sexual harassment charges against a former Blue Angels commander has caused a delay in the announcement of the team's 2015 crew lineup. The Blue Angels have never had a female pilot, and it is reported that the investigation into allegations of inappropriate conduct against Captain Gregory McWhorter has delayed the announcement of all positions in the 2015 team, both for pilot and ground crews. Commander Jeannie Groenveld, a spokeswoman for the Navy Aviation Command based in San Diego, said the delay was a direct result of the investigation. Groenveld said the selections would be announced August 16th, but not before the process for selecting team members has been reviewed and approved by Navy leaders in San Diego. She added that the Blue Angels procedures requires them to select applicants who are the most qualified and the best fit. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Please remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition. And by the way, there are now only 11 more days left to Oshkosh. Of course, we'll be there 24-7 to bring you the most comprehensive coverage in the business. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.